Today, I'm gonna to show you the difference between curves and levels in Photoshop. Hey there, and welcome to Flearn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me at flearn.com where we make learning fun. And in this video, we're going over two of the most commonly used tools for adjusting things like exposure as well as color in Photoshop. And these are curves and levels. Now, most of the things that you do can be done with levels, but sometimes you wanna bring in curves so you can get a little bit more control. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop and show you how both of these tools work. So here's our sample image. You can actually download this on flurn.com so you can follow along. Now to start off with, we're gonna go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and we're gonna go to levels. There we go, let's go ahead and hit okay. And we're gonna go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and I'm gonna go down to curves and hit okay. So we have a curves and a levels adjustment layer. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these two before we start. So we can see here with our levels, we have a chart right here. It starts off high on the left-hand side and kind of goes down to the right-hand side. Now this is actually our histogram of our image. We can go to window and then down to histogram to see our full histogram, including color information. And we can see we have a spike on the left and you can see it starts to go down as we go to the right-hand side. Now, what this tells us is that we have more information on the dark side of our image. So the left is for darks and the right is for light. So there's a lot more dark here than there is light. And that makes sense, right? We can just look at our image and tell, yep, there's a lot of dark information in our image and not a whole lot of light information. Okay, now here with curves, we get the same thing. It's kind of stretched vertically, but we can see a spike for the dark information and there we go, all the way to the light information. So basically both of these are displaying our histogram, which is the light and color information of our image. Now, some other similarities here. If I go to my levels, you're gonna see I have three different eyedroppers that I can use. And if I go to my curves, I also have access to those three different eyedroppers. I got a couple more, that's why curves is a little bit more complex, but let's show you around what those eyedroppers do. Let's go ahead and close out my histogram. Now my eyedropper will allow me to choose my black point, my midpoint, and my white point. So if you have an area that you want to be completely black, let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna click my black point here. We're gonna click on something that I actually wanna be black. There we go, just that top left corner. We're gonna do the same thing with my white point here, and we'll just zoom in to click on that. I want that to be actually white. And then my midpoint, will, which will actually help white balance our photo as well. So I can click here on this target neutral gray and you can see it helps the white balance. If I were to click on this red, it would try to compensate by making my image cyan. Or if I click on this yellow, it tries to compensate by making my image blue, okay? So make sure if you're using your uh, midpoint, your gray point, you wanna click on an actual gray area and that's gonna help you white balance. So you can see just with a couple of different eyedroppers, I'm able to, let's just turn this off and on, color correct, and exposure correct my photo, okay? And the same exact tools are available for you here in Curves and they work in the same exact way. Okay, now let's say you don't wanna use the eyedroppers. You wanna use these uh, control points and you wanna do things a little bit more manually. That's fantastic. So let's go ahead and reset this. Now with these control points, I'm gonna choose my black point. So I can click here and drag this from the left to the right. And what this is gonna do, keep in mind I have all this information here. It's gonna take all of this information that's to the left of this point and make it completely black. So as I keep going, more in my image is just gonna be becoming completely black. On the other side, I can make more of my image completely white. There we go. And here on the midpoint, I can make my middle pixels either darker or I can make them lighter. And don't forget you can use all three of these in a combination with each other if you want. Let's go ahead and reset that. Now here on the bottom, I have my output levels. What this is gonna do is take my darkest point and make it lighter, okay? We can take our lightest point and make it darker. Now you can use these all in combination with each other. So if I want more blacks, but I don't want the blacks to be as dark, I can do this. I can go ahead and pull my midtones a little bit lighter. I can make my highlights a little bit brighter and I can make my highlights just simply uh, not all the way white. So there's a lot that we can do here. Now, all of these things that we've done so far have just been in RGB, which is a combination of a red, green, and blue channels, okay? So this is not color correcting at all. We're just exposure correcting. 
but I can actually correct my colors by clicking on RGB and editing my individual color channels. My red channel, green channel, and blue channel. So let's just jump into our red channel to show you how this works. You have the same sliders, but here you're gonna be pulling the reds out of the darks and that's gonna replace them with cyans. You're going to be adding red to your highlights here. There we go. And here you can choose your midtones. It's gonna push uh, to the right, is gonna be pulling reds out, which is gonna be cyan. So cyan and red are opposite of one another. There we go. And here we can see I can add red to my shadows and take away red from my highlights. Now this can be relatively tough to color correct your image because like, you know, who knows what, you know, okay, there. We got a lot of different sliders here, right? So it's, you wanna use these relatively subtly and I usually use these for more like color toning rather than color correction. All right, let's go ahead and hit undo there. It's gonna just reset everything. We still have our green channel to go over. So this is gonna be more magenta or more green. And let's go ahead and reset this, go to our blue channel. We're gonna have more yellow or more blue. So those are basically the opposite. So red and cyan are opposites. We have green and magenta as opposites, and we have blue and yellow as opposites. So there we have our levels adjustments. And as I mentioned, levels are a little bit more simplified and they do the job very well most of the time. Now, if you want a little bit more control, that's when it's time to use curves. So let's go ahead and take a look at these points here in our levels and see how they relate to curves. So we're gonna start off with our black point here. You can see it simply makes more of my image black. Now here in my curves, that's gonna be right here. I can take my black point and it's gonna make more of my image black. So with levels, my white point, making more of my image white, that's all right over here. White point, making more of my image white. You can see it looks the exact same thing, okay? Now here I have a middle point that I can make my midtones lighter or darker. Now with curves, you actually use that midpoint yourself. You can click here and drag it up to make your middle areas lighter or down to make them a little bit darker, okay? Next with our levels, we have our output levels making our darks not as dark. And here in curves, I can do that by simply grabbing this white point and dragging it up. So I'm making my darks not as dark. With our levels, I can make my lights not as light. And I can do the same thing here with curves, making my lights not as light, okay? I also have control over each of my individual color channels. So RGB, red, green, and blue. So now we can see, just go back to our levels here. We can change our individual color channels. We've got five different points that we can slide around and we've got our eyedroppers. So all of those different tools are accessible here with curves as well. So we can see that curves allows you to do everything that levels does, but we have even more control. So let's go ahead and jump in and show you how that works. I wanna start off with this tool right up here at the very top, because I think this is a very helpful tool for using curves. Basically, this tool allows you to not have to worry about this graph at all. You can simply focus on your image. Now, you can see as I'm moving the little eyedropper tool around my image, it's changing my little point here on the graph. If I go to a lighter area, it's gonna go onto the right-hand side. If I go to a darker area, it's gonna go to the darker-hand side. So, what this is allows me to do is simply drag up or down, and it's gonna make these areas lighter or darker. And the reason it's doing lighter or darker is because we have RGB selected, which is a combination of my red, green, and blue channels. Okay, so let's just say I wanna make my darks a little bit lighter. I'm gonna go ahead and click here and just drag that up, which is gonna make my darks lighter. Now we say, oh, that's cool, but it made this area a little bit too light, so I wanna make it darker. So I'm gonna click here and we'll just make that a little bit darker. Fantastic. Now these mid-tone areas here with our subject skin, I wanna make that lighter. I can make this a little bit lighter. And there we go, we're starting to look pretty good. So what I did with this tool right up here, this little hand with the up down arrow, it's basically creating each of these individual points along my curves adjustment. Now I can still move any of these points that I want to. If I wanna do some fine tuning here, not a problem. I can come in and do that right here. But you can see what we got in this case is one, two, three, four different points along the middle of our curve. Now, this is why it's a little bit more advanced than levels, because with levels, I only have one point and I can't add any points. It's simply, where do you want this little point to be? But I couldn't say I want it, you know, right here a little bit brighter and right here a little bit darker. I don't have that level of control, 
but I do have that level of control with curves. Now I can do the same thing with my different colors. So if I go to my red channel and I wanna say, you know what, let's use our little hand tool because in my opinion, this hand tool is a fantastic place to start, especially if you're beginning. I wanna say, you know what, I want a little bit more uh, red in my subject's skin. So I can click here and just drag up and that's gonna bring a little bit more red into my subject's skin. And if I don't want as much red in the shadows, I can just drag that down. I can go to my green channel and say, I want a little bit less green. There we go, in my subject skin. And my blue channel, I want a little bit less blue in our subject skin as well. So I'm simply able to target that light range and then make adjustments from there. So doing that, I was able to not only affect the exposure, but also the color of my image. You can see here in the before, my subject had a little bit of a green tint to her skin. And in the after, we're able to color correct that tint, giving our subject skin a little bit more proper color. I'm gonna go ahead and create another one to show you these additional tools, but I wanna keep this one on here because I think we did a nice job color correcting. So let's go ahead and grab another curves adjustment layer. We'll show you these additional tools. So we've gone over the hand tool. We've gone over each of the eyedropper tools. Now this tool just simply denotes that we can click on any one of these points here and make adjustments as we'd like. Again, in my opinion, it's more helpful to use this hand tool because it's hard, kind of hard to visualize here. And as we can see, we've done quite a bit, but if you want to, you can just simply grab these points and drag them up or down. Now our next tool comes with the pencil tool and this basically allows you to paint your own curves line, which is really cool. If I wanna go up right here or maybe put a point up there, you can really start to do whatever you want. Uh, there we go, and you can kind of rough it in. So if you want to say, I want my darks to be darker and my lights to be lighter, you can kind of rough that in. Or if you want your darks to be lighter and your lights to be darker, you can kind of rough that in as well. Now, our next point here basically just allows you to kind of smooth that out. So if I click here, it's just smoothing that out. So it's gonna smooth out whatever I draw. So if I go, whoa, crazy, uh, here I can just click and smooth that out to get it a little bit more uh, <laughs> how I'd want it. You can see I still have my white point is over here and my black point is over here. So I can go back here and move those points if I want to. And don't forget, you can hit reset at any point in time. So basically each of your eyedropper tools, plus you have your uh, curve tool and your pencil tool. Now curves also has an auto. So if I just click on auto here, there we go. In this case, I think it's actually done a really nice job. As you can see with levels adjustment, we also have an auto as well. So that's a really good place to start and then you can make some changes from there. Now in this case, I think that's done a really good job, but let's say I wanna go ahead and do a little bit more color correction. This is where I could simply go to my green channel. Okay, grab my little hand tool and I could pull down the greens in my subject skin. There we go. I could go to my red tool, pull down the reds just a tiny bit. It's allowing more cyan and pull down the blue just a tiny bit. So at the end of the day, it does not matter which one you use. They're both great tools. Curves will allow you a little bit more control while levels keep things nice and simple. So my suggestion would be find whichever tool kind of clicks for you a little bit better, whatever makes sense as far as layout and go from there. But when using the curves adjustment layer, make sure to click on that hand icon. It's a total game changer and it makes it much easier to use. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Go ahead and click on that subscribe button and the notification bell. We'll send you a free tutorial every single week. And if you're ready to take a deep dive into Photoshop and learn about things like compositing different photos together, as well as retouching, check out Flurn Pro. We have a link in the description right down below with an exclusive discount code. Thanks again. I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.